Hi guys, welcome to this video looking at why ionic compounds don't conduct as a solid, but do conduct as a liquid. Now, before we get on to explaining the property, it's really important for you guys to know what type of bonding you've got. In the exam, they won't turn around to you and say you've got ionic bonding or metallic bonding. They will give you the name of a chemical most likely and ask you to explain why it has a high melting point, why it doesn't conduct, why it does conduct, and so on. So you've got to be able to work out what type of bonding is going on to then work out the properties to then be able to explain it. So the first really important fact to remember is that if it's ionic, it contains both a metal and a non-metal. So if I have a look at all these different examples that you could get in an exam, let's go through them. Now remember, metals are found on the left of the periodic table, non-metals are found on the right of the periodic table, with hydrogen sitting on its own as a non-metal. If we look at carbon, carbon's found here, it's a non-metal. Oxygen, it's also a non-metal, so I don't have both. So CO2 is not ionic. NaCl, sodium is found in group 1, chlorine is found in group 7, so I have a metal and a non-metal, so that's ionic. PbBr2, you can see lead down here, you can see bromine over here on the right, therefore I have ionic bonding. Fe, well straight away I've got a metal, but there's nothing else, there's no non-metals, so Fe is not ionic. Therefore, last one, MgCl2, magnesium group 2, metal, chlorine group 7, non-metal, so it's ionic. Now you can work out whether it's ionic or not, you need to remember the basic properties. All ionic compounds have a high melting point. They all do not conduct electricity when solid, but they do conduct electricity when molten. So let's get back to the point of this video. Why do ionic compounds only conduct when liquid, and not when solid? So why don't they conduct as a solid? It's all to do with that strong electrostatic attraction between the cations and anions. If that strong electrostatic attraction is there, the ions are not free to move. They're held in place in that lattice. If they can't move, they can't carry a charge. But they can conduct as a liquid. So what happens when it becomes molten, when it becomes dissolved, that allows them to conduct electricity? And hopefully, from the definition we've just talked about, you can figure it out. Those ions are now free to move. So when it's a liquid, the ions are free to move, and therefore it can carry a charge. Right, let's have a look at what the examiner can ask you on this topic. Question one, look at the substances on the right, identify the ionic substance. Hopefully by now you've remembered it's a metal and a non-metal, so which of those four has a metal and a non-metal in it? That's your ionic substance. Question two, explain the ability of this ionic substance to conduct electricity. So first of all, think back to what you've just watched in this video. When can it conduct? When can't it conduct? Once you've done that, why can it conduct in this state? Why can't it conduct in this state? And so on. So pause the video, have a go, and we'll see how you've done in a minute. Okay, let's go through. Question one, look at the substances on the right. Identify the ionic substance. So the only one in there that's got a metal, iron, and a non-metal chlorine is iron chloride for your first mark. Question two, explain the ability of this substance to conduct electricity. So first of all, you need to say it cannot conduct when solid, but can when liquid or molten or dissolved, any of those for your first mark. Then you need to be able to tell me why. That's where the explain part comes in. So your second marking point for saying, as a solid, it can't conduct because the ions are not free to move. And then when liquid, molten, dissolved, those ions therefore are free to move and can pass on that charge. Three sentences, three small comments, three easy marks in your exam, provided you know you have an ionic compound. I do have a review question for you, which if you want to answer, put in the comments, I'll tell you if you're right or not which is copper nitrate, CuNO3 in brackets, 2, will not conduct electricity as a solid. Explain why not, and then explain what could be done to make that copper nitrate conduct. So when does it conduct, for that second part, and why? Don't forget the explain bit. That is everything you need to know for this video. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.